Well, beloved, I'm Pastor Mark Burns, and I'm so grateful that you decided to tune into the broadcast of It's Your Harvest Now. I'm Pastor Mark Burns, and I want you to get your pen and paper out. Like I say, every broadcast, I want you to get something to record the data that God is about to release into your life. Many people ask me, why do people fail? And that's what I want to talk about today, why people who try to reach their goal but yet come unsuccessful. Why, uh, what, what are some of the characteristics that failures tend to have? And I want to talk about just that, why people fail. Get your pen and paper out. The first characteristics uh, to why people fail is the unpersuaded. The unpersuaded. Write that down, the unpersuaded. People fail who are not persuaded about their goals. Let me say that again. People fail when they're not persuaded about their goals. When, when they're not persuaded about the validity of their goal, the importance of their goal. Pastor Mark, what do you mean when you say the unpersuaded? Let me say it like this. You will fail financially if you are unpersuaded, God wants you to have money. A sinner will do better than you if a sinner believes God wants them to prosper, and you don't believe that. If you don't believe that, then you will not prosper. We teach it over and over again here at the Harvest Praise and Worship Center that, that, that expectancy is the key to our faith. Believing that God is going to do what he said he's going to do is key to the manifestation of what's already taken place in the spirit realm for it to manifest in the natural. You can pray, you can talk, you can, you can speak in tongues, you can do all of that, but if you really truly don't expect God to show up and to perform the miracle that he needs to do in your life, you will not receive that blessing. If you're unpersuaded about your goal, if you're not persuaded about the goodness of it, the greatness of it, the value of it, then you will fail. You will fail. If you are a person that's watching me right now and you're nonchalantly going after your goal, or you, you, you choose, to, to, you choose to, 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 to listen to the advice of people that don't have your same goals or dream, and, and, and you've allowed their, uh, their uh, words to persuade you to, to not go after it wholeheartedly, to, to not make your dream or your goal your number one focus, then you, my brother or sister, you're unpersuaded. You've got to be persuaded about the blessings that's going to come through uh, you overcoming what it is that you've got to overcome. I say it all the time. You've got to focus not on the battles of war. You've got to focus on the spoils of war. You, 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 you also must be persuaded that God is for you. You've got to know that God is on your side. You've got to know that, 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 that there are angels that are encamped around you. You've got to know that God wants you to succeed. He desires for you to prosper in all that I, that, that, that I pray that you should be prosperous in everything you do. God desires for you to be prosperous in life. If you don't believe God is for you, well, who will believe God is for you? I hope you believe. You've got to know that God desires for you to make it. Doubt is as powerful as faith. Doubt, write this down, is faith in reverse. God's got to be believed. God demands that you believe in him. He said, if you come to me, before you come to me, you've got to first believe that I am who I say I am and that I am a rewarder of them that diligently seeks after me. Doubt is a faith killer. Doubt kills and stops 
the provisions and the blessings and the miracles God has for your life. The Bible recorded of the 12 spies that went to Canaan, 10 came back in doubt about God's ability. They spied out the land for 40 days, and when they came back, they came back complaining and full of doubt. God then gave them 40 years of hardship. For every day of doubt, God gave them 365 days of hardship. What got me into faith was not wanting big dreams. What got me into faith is not wanting to be successful in money or, or, to, or to be successful because of the rewards that comes. What got me believing and having crazy faith, doing things that I'm unqualified for, walking into doors that, that, that I was never prepared for, but knowing that God was on my side, what got me into that was, was hating the consequences of doubt. I didn't get into faith because I wanted to be rich because I, I, I'm a, I, I got into having crazy faith because I'm afraid what will happen to me if I'm not in it. I, 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 I'm afraid that, that, that the provision that God has given my wife and I and my six beautiful children, it, it, it comes by my having faith in God, not faith in my own abilities. Because I know I'm, I'm messed up in a lot of ways. I know I still have things I've got to overcome. I know that I still have, have things that I have yet to, to overcome in my life. It, it, it won't be until I get into the absolute presence of God in heaven that I'll be completely healed of everything that I battle with. So I know I'm still crazy. I know I still have issues. But, 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 but I, I'm not I, I don't concentrate on my weaknesses. I concentrate on God's strengths. Because in his presence, my weaknesses become strong. In his presence, David declared that in his presence, I have fullness of joy. And for those that are watching this telecast right now, you're at home and you, you feel defeated. You feel like, like that, that there's never going to be any goodness or greatness that comes out of you. You've got to remove every doubt in your heart. Again, doubt is faith in reverse. You've got to remove doubt. You have to become more persuaded about your losses then your doubt will create. Let me say that again. You've got to become way more persuaded about what you will gain versus what you will lose if you doubt God. Because you've got to know if you doubt the presence of God, then doors will close for your life. It's like me trying to, to lose weight, and I'm, and I'm going to lose this weight. But if I don't start losing weight, I will keep gaining weight. How many here know you don't want to stay the same? You don't want to stay the same for those that are watching this telecast. You desire not to stay the same. And in order to change, you've got to begin to do things that you've never have ever done before in your life. Life is not just a matter of, 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 of you just wanting to, to, to get good. It's the same with marriages or relationships for, for those who are married or those who are in a relationship that is watching this telecast. It's not just a matter of we need to get along or we need to get along better. If you don't get better, you will get worse. You, you have to be persuaded about the losses your failures will create. You've got to be persuaded about what you will lose if you don't decide to change. You've got to be persuaded of the consequences that will transpire in your life if you don't begin to change your thinking, you begin to change the way you act. Understand this. Whatever you refuse to overcome will eventually overcome you. It's not enough for others to be persuaded for you. You've got to be persuaded all by yourself. You've got to be persuaded that God desires for you to have 
better in life, to be better, to overcome, to not stay the same. You've got to know without a shadow of a doubt in your life. When we launched out to have this television ministry and the production company that God has blessed us with, I had no idea how to work a camera. I had no idea how to, how to, how to direct or to switch or to run cables or to have proper lighting. I have, had no idea. And people tried to talk me out of it because, you know, we, we're from a small town. They would, they would try to help me to believe that we're doing too much. You know, uh, you, you know, they would say things like, you know, you're simply just trying to get famous or, you know, you know, you know, everybody's talking negative about you. But for those for those of them that that that, that tried to convince me to, to not walk into the what God has called me to do, they're at home watching me on TV right now because I listen to the voice of God and not the voice of people. I'm persuaded. Nobody has to be persuaded for me. I'm persuaded that what God can take this, this, this young person from South Carolina who at the time didn't have a lot to speak of, but, what, but, but God has taken my little bit and in the hands of the master is making it to be a lot for his glory. And you too have to be persuaded. I'm afraid to not tithe. My wife and I talk about this all the time. I'm afraid to not tithe. I'm afraid to not give seed. I'm afraid to not give monetary blessing to ministries. I'm afraid to because everything that we have has came to us by our giving, not by us trying to make money. I am blessed by my sowing, not by my getting money. I am blessed, and I'm trying to tell those of you that are watching me that, 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 that you've got to be persuaded about the goodness of God and persuaded about the gifts that are coming in your life way more than you not sowing and giving into your life. Listen, you don't touch that dial. We'll be right back because it's getting good. Don't you touch that dial. We'll be right back after this. God has given me incredible favor on my life, and I want to invite you to join with me the Favor 252 Covenant. I am asking God for 252 faithful partners who will sow a $52 seed every month for the Luke 252 Favor Covenant and declare with me, Pastor Mark, I am in covenant for the Luke 252 blessing. I am one of the 252 linked to your anointing. We sanctify that $52 seed for the following Luke 252 harvest. Number one, we pray that you will have an increase of wisdom that for the next 52 weeks, every decision that you make will be the right decision for your life. Number two, we are in covenant that within the next 52 weeks, your life will increase in stature, that you will have supernatural elevation in your job, in your finances, in your health, and your relationships relationships. And finally, brothers, we believe that within the next 52 weeks, family, you will find divine favor first with God and then favor with man. When you partner with me, we will send you out a certificate that will declare publicly, I belong to the favored 252. You will also receive a private conference call number where I will be able to pour out the wisdom of God just for our partners. You'll also receive the monthly teaching CD that is designed just for our faithful favored 252. I will begin to pray for you daily and I want you to send me your picture because God may just give me a word over your life. I get to lay my hands on your picture and if God gives me a word, I might just get to call you personally and tell you what God is saying. Become a part of the favorite 252 right now. Link arms with me and watch the blessing fall over your life. Satan wants you to feel like no one cares about your situation. If you're battling pain, guilt, anger, or having financial problems, or health issues, or having relationship conflicts, call the number on the screen right now and let our prayer partners give you an encouraging word to remind you that through prayer and the wisdom of God, 
your situation through the blood of Jesus Christ will not overcome you, but you will overcome it. Hello, beloved. I'm Pastor Mark, and I'm so grateful that you're again tuned in to It's a Harvest Now. For those who are just tuning into the broadcast, uh, we're teaching today on why people fail. For those of you who are watching the broadcast, you've tried several times into reaching your goal, but for whatever reason, you're still not quite reaching the goal that you're seeking after. And so I want you to get pen and paper because we continue on why people fail. Write this down, my beloved. There's a danger of the wrong person being in the right season of your life. Let me say that again. Write that down. There's a danger of the wrong person being in the right season of your life. Samson didn't have to date every woman to get his hair cut. You don't have to hit every telephone pole to have a wreck. It doesn't take an automatic weapon, an Uzi, to shoot you multiple times to kill you. No, it only takes one bullet. If you fail, it will be because of someone you permitted to speak into your life, persuasively influencing you. The third voice has always destroyed relationships. Let me say that again. The third party has always destroyed relationships. We call it the third party, the third voice. If you fail, it will be because of someone you permitted to speak into your life. I want you to repeat after me. Your future will be decided by whom you've chosen to believe. Let me say that again. Repeat after me. Your future will be decided by whom you've chosen to believe. Your future, write that down, will be decided by whom you've chosen to believe. When God wants to bless you, he brings a person into your life. When God wants to bless you, write that down, he brings a person into your life. When God wants to protect you, he removes a person from your life. When God wants to protect you, he removes a person from your life. When God wants to bless you, he brings a person. He reveals a person. He blesses you with the person in your life. But when he wants to protect you, he then removes a person from your life. Know this, that even in this building that we're recording in, in the studio that we're in, that the exit is just as important as the entrance. Subtraction is as necessary as addition. So when God wants to bless you, he brings a person into your life. When God wants to protect you, he removes a person from your life. And there are some things, children of God, that has to be forcefully removed from your life. There are some things that, that God has to remove for you. Why? Because you didn't have the power to remove it yourself. He, it, or she has become, has, has, has such a grip on your life that it has controlled you. It's controlled your feelings. It controlled your actions. It controlled your emotions. That you have become so whipped by it, so controlled by it, that it has become your very God. That you eat, live, breathe for that very thing. It has become more important to you than the the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God's made it very clear that he is a jealous God. That he will not take second to nobody. He will not be the back seat to nobody when he is God. God said, if I'm your God, then where is my honor? God requires that we honor him. You become so whipped by the thing that controls your emotions. And once that happens, once you've allowed that thing, he, she, whatever it is, money, power, women, men, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, once it has become your God, then you have forced the hand of God to intervene in your life. God loves you enough to rip off the band-aid, to 
to, to, he become the protective father that you might have never had. And he drags you away from it. He knows what's more important. He knows what's best for you. And right now, some of you are like Samuel. You're crying over spilled milk. God has forcefully removed something from your life. And you're crying over something the hand of God has removed. That the glory of God has departed. God told Samuel, why are you crying? Why are you weeping? He said, I found me a man after my heart. Right now, those of you who are watching me, somebody, you're crying over something that God has removed from your life. Help me, Holy Ghost. You, you're crying over something that, that the presence of God has left the building. Why? Because you become more in love with it than the actual presence of God. It's a lot like how church goes, religion goes today. It's like when the children of Israel lost the Ark of the Covenant. Everything was still going on, on the outside the priest was still working. The fire was still being up. The, the labor, the bowl, the bronze uh, uh, labor was still uh, had water. People were still washing. Uh, uh, sacrifices were still going up. They were still working in the candlesticks and, and, and the table of showbread. All of that was still going on. The priest was still working like normal, but the Ark of the Covenant has departed. The presence of God was gone. And it's a like, like many ministries today. A lot of music is going on. A lot of praise teams are singing. A lot of shouting is going on. But there is no glory from God. Why? Because God has departed. God has left the building. Everything is still going on the outside. And it looks like to everyone else that everything is, is normal. Everything is righteous. Everything is great. But the Ark of the Covenant has departed. Dangerous place to be in the house of God when the glory is gone. God has left. Samuel was crying because the presence of God has left King Saul and found David. Somebody is watching me and you're crying over something that the presence of God has left. Why? Because you become a slave to what it is that controls you. And because you become a slave to it. God had to remove it from you. What you need to understand is what you're willing to walk away from. You have mastered it. It has not mastered you. Let me say that again. What you are willing to walk away from, you have mastered it. It has not mastered you. The wrong person being in the right season of your life rarely leaves voluntarily. Let me say that again. The wrong person being in the right season of your life rarely leaves voluntarily because their own success depends on you. It's like after the Civil War, during the Reconstruction period, the South and the Southern government economy had crashed because the South's main source of income was produced by slaves. A master became dependent on the slave. You've got to make it up in your mind that you refuse to be free labor anymore. That if you want something from me, they've got to work for it. Help me, Holy Ghost. That you ain't no more coming up in here, slipping into my bed without no ring on my finger, without a last name change. That I, if you want something from me, you've you got to work for it. I refuse to be your slave. Right now, I feel the Holy Ghost. There's somebody that's watching this broadcast right now, even right now, and you are a slave to someone else's sinful flesh desires. You've got to have the gumption of the Holy Ghost to say, today is the last day that I refuse to be a slave to someone else's sin. Today, I'm breaking away. Today, I'm breaking the chains. 
Why? Because what you are willing to walk away from determines what God will bring to you. Oh, wow. I hope you just heard what I said. Let me say that again. What you are willing to walk away from determines what God will bring to you. The rewards of separation is beyond your calculation. There may be somebody in your life that is stopping the miracle, stopping the blessing, stopping the favor from falling into your life. There may be somebody in your life that you've allowed to be in your life, that you've allowed to be in your, in your, in your personal space that's cutting off the blessing that God has for your life. Children of God, you've got to understand that, 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 that Satan's favorite entry point into your life is always someone that is close to you. I need you to write that down. Satan's favorite entry point into your life is always through someone that is close to you. Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter uh, 13, the Bible said that God told Abram, get away from your kindred. God told Abraham in, in Genesis to disconnect from all of those that you're comfortable with. He said they, 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 their philosophy is poisonous. Their belief system is deadly. Disconnect yourself from everything that, that you're comfortable with. He said, I will take you to a place. I will show you. I will do what, what they could never do for you. I will make you great. God told Abram. God shows Abram everything that he can, that he's going to do from him. And what does Abraham does? The Bible says he, after hearing the, the, the decree from God to separate himself from every kindred, from, from everything that he's used to, Abram goes and get his nephew and only tells his nephew part of what God told him. He changed the formula. God declared and decreed a word that would have blessed without headaches. Help me, Holy Ghost. I feel God. God God's giving you words right now that he's trying to bless you without you having headaches. He's trying to bless you without you having to fight for it. He's trying to bless you without you having to sweat for it. A sweatless victory. But it is only when we change the formula we take part of what God says. And instead of carrying it out exactly how he said it, we change things up. We only believe part of what he says. We only take part of the word of God and we apply that part that we like to ourselves. It's like changing the formula of H2O, which is water, to H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. H2O is water. It brings life. That we need water to survive. And I think you can't, you can't even survive three days without water. The third day you're going to, 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 to die. Water is so important to our life. God gives us the word. He gives us water. He gives us H2O. But it is only when we change the formula. Instead of one part hydrogen and two part oxygen if you simply add one more oxygen to water something that brings you life it immediately becomes something that can bring you death hydrogen peroxide if you add one oxygen to water it becomes instead of h2o it becomes h2o2 which becomes hydrogen peroxide children of god i pray that you receive this and i pray that it changes the way you think I want you right now, if you enjoyed this, call the number that you see on the screen. Go to Facebook, go to Twitter, follow me on Twitter, stay connected to me. I want to stay connected to you. And I'm so honored you watched this broadcast of It's Your Harvest Now. Remember, this is the place where Jesus is made famous. We'll see you again next week. I love you so much.